as, as most people know, I was involved in a lot of issues with the flow control issues that came through. And I think there's a trigger for everybody that gets into politics. Um, when the flow control was being discussed, I, I had the opportunity to go to many public meetings. And one of the public meetings I went to, it happened to be uh, a League of Cities meeting here in the county. One of the staff members from the uh, county government stood up and made this comment. Every time we think we have this issue in the back, either a citizen or a business person goes to either a city councilman or a county councilman and complains or makes a comment and it all comes out of the bag again and we have to stuff it back in the back. To me, I took that as an affront and I took that as a statement that meant basically the citizens and the business people in Horry County aren't entitled to representation from their council members. Um, and actually, my, the person that I'm running against was sitting in that room and made no comment and it, it absorbed that. I do believe that Carolina Forest Boulevard needs to be four lane all the way from Highway 501 down to uh, River Oaks Drive. I think that would uh, alleviate a lot of the traffic at the very least. If we're not going to four lane that highway, there needs to be a third, there needs to be a central turn lane put in the middle uh, to keep that traffic from backing up. Uh, I think that same situation applies to Singleton Ridge Road that came up the other night in our forum. Um, a, a central turn lane there would um, alleviate a lot of the stop and go, or the right turns, the left turns to all of those medical facilities through there, but it would not encroach any more on the right of ways to get, to get the highway closer to the people that live in Quail Creek and the other areas. Um, there has to be something eventually done more permanent to relieve the uh, traffic concerns at the Carolina Forest 501 intersection. We're going to have to work together with state agencies to make this happen. We're going to need to involve our delegation. We're going to need to sit down with DOT. We're going to need to spend some time and say, look, we understand this is an environmental area that is easily impacted. We know there are wildlife in that area that uh, we need to take care of. Now let's come up with a plan. Let's, let's put it together and let's move forward. We can sit and we can argue about things like this all day long. But what it comes down to it is kind of like, um, it's kind of like negotiating a car deal. If you're going out to buy a new car, eventually you get down to the bottom line. And what we need to do is just cut through all of the rhetoric and cut through all of the, um, all the question, answers, debates, arguments, whatever else, and say, okay, you bring your list to the table, we bring our list to the table. Let's get it all down here, let's put it together, and let's find out where the bottom line is, and let's move forward. I think the state has jurisdiction over that. And uh, the state passed that law down. I don't think that there's any benefit um, to Horry County having to enforce that law. First of all, I'm not in favor of uh, giving public dollars to private organizations. I think that's a misgiving to a certain extent. If we could as somehow as what you're going to run into is who's going to control that, who's going to control that cash when it comes in. I think in the city of Myrtle Beach, once they get to the point that they can start turning some of that cash back to the property tax reductions for the, for the citizens of Myrtle Beach, you're going to find that that council smiled on a little bit more than they were when they first implemented that tax. I think that tax is hard to apply. I think it's over applied and you'll, you'll find people in Carolina Forest and Sacristy and in other areas that are paying that tax on any internet purchase that they make now. If you have a Myrtle Beach address, you pay that 1% sales tax on anything that you buy over the internet. So. I think it's something that's hard to administrate and hard to restrict. 
I think if you go to my website and you read, you'll find out that I'm for full disclosure. If it's worth being discussed in a back room, it's worth being discussed in front of Horry County. Those cameras are in that council room for a reason. They were put there by the council members uh, so that Horry County could see what's going on. Now, there are some times that we probably uh, don't need to drag out dirty laundry uh, or personal situations in front of um, the constituents of the county. However, um, if it's legal, if it's warranted, then we should go into executive session. But otherwise, it needs to be discussed in public so that people can stand up. Any taxpayer money that is spent in this county needs to be accounted for properly. Um, in economic times such as these, we can't afford to have money being wasted. Uh, we need to be good stewards of what we're handed. We need to spend it appropriately. We need to be frugal in how we spend it. And we need to send a message to the taxpayers in Horry County that we are good stewards of the money that they give us. How far should the county go uh, to obtain that audit? Uh, should, should there be a lawsuit filed, for instance, or, or is that... I think there could be, there should be a court order issued. Um, I think the solicitor should be brought in to take a look at it. And, and let's, let's get a subpoena, bring it to four. Let's take a look at it. I think, you know, whatever legal, whatever legal moves need to be made to get your hands on that audit needs to be there. Needs to be done. You know, since I've been in Horry County, we've brought in consultants to do just about everything I can think of. The one thing I haven't seen a consultant come in to do is to look at our administrative structure and tell us whether it's adequate, whether we're overstaffed, understaffed, whether we're too top heavy on the administrative side, you know, how, how are we structured? We need to have an audit done on personnel and on responsibilities. Most of those jobs you'll find out aren't on the what I like to call the rubber meet the road side of, of the employee base at the county. Those jobs are in the administrative side. And what you may have to do at that point is ask more of your administrators. Um, so we need to go back and reevaluate. We need to take a look at what the job descriptions are. What are the job responsibilities? Are we overstaffed? Are we understaffed? Um, do we need this many more? We need to take a serious look at that, not necessarily in-house, but we need somebody to come in from outside that has experience at looking at those situations throughout the country to tell us, you know, maybe you need to get closer to here. The top 11 employees at Solid Waste Authority account for $786,000 of salary per year. That's an average of $71,000 per year. Um, you add benefits to that, it's well over a million dollars. So, what we need to do, you know, and they, they have somewhere in the neighborhood of 80 to 100 employees, so if you look at it that way, 11 employees account for 10% of the employee base, but 27% of the payroll. 